Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at solving equations, particularly focusing on those equations that have the unknown represented on one side. To begin with, we'll be looking at the four core skills that are required to solve these following equations. The first equation that we're going to have a look at is on the left here, where we've got an unknown value or the pro numeral x. We're adding 3 to that unknown value and the answer is 9. You could probably work this out in your head, but we want to uh, use this to practice those skills that we're going to use later on for more complex problems that you might not be able to do in your head. Our main goal to be able to solve these equations is to isolate the pronumeral so it's on its own on one side of the equation. In this case, we've got the x on the left hand side and we've got a plus 3 on this side. So we need to remove the plus 3 from this side of the equation. To do that, we can perform what is known as the inverse operation, or what I like to think of the opposite of addition, which is subtraction. So if we subtract 3 from this left hand side, these two will cancel each other out. We've got a plus 3, subtract 3, it'll equal 0. So on the left hand side, we'll just be left with our x value. However, these equations are like a set of scales. They balance at the moment. If we subtract 3 from one side, the scales are no longer going to balance. So whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other so they can balance out. So on the right hand side here, we need to subtract 3 as well. 9 subtract 3 is 6. So we're saying that our x value should equal 6. The advantage with these sorts of problems is we can check our solutions ourselves by something that's known as substitution. If we take our 6 or our x value and substitute it back into the original formula, it should still balance. So wherever we see an x, let's substitute the value 6 in our check. So 6 plus 3 should equal 9. 6 plus 3 we do know equals 9, so 9 does equal 9. So look at that, we've found the correct solution. On the right hand side we have the problem x subtract 3 equals 9. Like on the left hand side our goal is to get the pronumeral x on its own. So we need to remove the subtract 3 from this side of the equation. The inverse of subtraction is addition. If we add 3 to the left hand side, like this, negative 3 plus 3 is going to be 0, so they'll cancel out and leave just our pronumeral on the left hand side. However, it's a set of scales, whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So we've got to also add 3 to the right hand side. On the left hand side, those two cancel, so we're left with our pronumeral x. On the right hand side, we've got 9 plus 3, which is 12. So we've found our answer to be 12. Once again, we can check our solution through substitution. So on our check, we take our 12 value and we substitute it wherever we see an x in the original equation. So it should be 12 take 3 should equal 9. We do know that 12 take 3 is 9. 9 does equal 9, so look at that, we've found the correct solution. And that's our first two core skills that we need to be able to solve these sorts of equations. Next, we're going to have a look at what happens when we've got multiplication and division. So we've got 5 multiplied by our pronumer, our unknown value, equals 35. Now, our goal in this, once again, is the same. We want to try and get this pronumeral on its own. So we've got to look at this 5. It's multiplying. And we need to do the inverse of multiplication, or the opposite, which is division. Now, if we divide this whole side here by 5, we find that these two values here will cancel out. Okay, And we're just left with our pronumeral x. However, it is a set of scales, whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So we also have to divide this side by 5. On the left hand side, these two values cancel, and we're left with that x. On the right hand side, we've got 35 divided by 5, which we know to be 7. 
So therefore, our x value should equal 7. So in our check step, if we substitute the value we found for x back into the original equation, the equation should balance. So wherever we see an x, we insert that or substitute that 7. So we've got 5 multiplied by 7 should equal 35. We know that 5 times 7 is 35. 35 does equal 35. Therefore, we've found the correct solution. In our next problem, we've got our pronumeral x divided by 5 equals 35. Once again, we're trying to get our pronumer on its own, so we need to remove this divided by 5. The inverse of division is multiplication. So if we multiply this whole side by 5, these will cancel out and we're just left with our pronumeral x. However, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other. So we also have to multiply the right hand side of the equation by 5. On the left hand side, these two values will cancel and we're left with our pronumeral x. On the right hand side, we've got 35 times 5. Now I'd like to think that you could do this either in your head or very quickly on the notes to the side here. So if we take our 35 and set it out like this to multiply it by our 5, we can quickly go 5 times 5 is 25. We put the 2 up high, the 5 down low. 3 times 5 is 15, add on the 2 we carried is 17, and we have now found our answer to be 175. Once again, the advantage of these problems is we can perform a check step. So wherever we see an x, we put our 175 value, we divide that by 5 and it should equal 35. If we pull this back out, and we put our 175 and our division symbol here. The amount of times 5 goes into 1, it doesn't. Number of 5s that go into 17 is 3. There's 2 remainder. Number of 5s into 25 is 5. 35 does equal 35. So we've found the correct solution. So let's have a bit of a recap. We've learned that in order to solve these equations, we need to perform the inverse operation to get our pronumeral or our unknown value on its own. We've learned that when we have addition, the inverse is subtraction. When we have subtraction, the inverse is addition. When we have multiplication, the inverse is division. When we have division, the inverse is multiplication. So let's take a look at a couple of problems that are slightly more complex than we had previously and apply those four core skills in order to find the solution. So if we consider the problem 4 multiplied by a pronumeral x, subtract 5 to that answer, it should equal 7. Now you'll notice immediately that we now have a 4 multiplying and a subtraction in our left hand side. We know that we need to perform the inverse operations. We still do. We need to perform the inverse operation by dividing. We need to perform the inverse operation by addition. I want you to pause this video for a moment and think about which one do we need to do first and why. So what did you come up with? To be able to answer that question, we need to think about the order of operations. On the left hand side here, we would perform multiplication first and then we would use our subtraction. So we need to think about what is the last thing that we would do on this left hand side to get to our answer on the right. And that is the first thing that we need to remove from this side of the equation. So we need to look at this subtraction of five. Perform the inverse of that, which is addition. So we need to plus five to this side of the equation over here. However, it's a set of scales. Whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other. So we also have to add 5 to the right-hand side of the equation. On the left-hand side, we've got this 4x value. On the right-hand side, we've got 7 plus 5, which we know to be 12. After we've done that, we've got a problem that looks very similar to the one that we did previously. 
we've got 4 times an unknown number equals 12. We've already learnt that the inverse operation of multiplication is division. So if we divide this value by that 4, we should get our x value on its own on the left hand side. However, whatever we do to one side, we also must do the same to the other. On the left hand side here, we're left with our x value. On the right hand side, we've got 12 divided by 4, which we know to be 3. So we're saying that our x value should equal 3. Once again, we can form a check step. So if we take our x value that we found and substitute it back into the original equation, it should still balance. So we've got 4 multiplied by our x value 3, subtract 5 to that answer, should equal 7. 4 times 3, we know to be 12. 12 take 5, should equal 7. 12 take 5 does equal 7. 7 equals 7, so we are correct. The next problem is slightly more complex again, where we've got 5 multiplied by our x, we subtract 9 to that value, then divide whatever that answer is by 2, and it should equal 8. We've got to look at what is the last thing that you would do on the left hand side to get the answer over on the right hand side. The last thing you would do would be to divide by 2. So we need to do the opposite of division, or the inverse, which is multiplication. So if we multiply this whole side by 2, these will cancel out and will remain with the 5x take 9. However, whatever we do to one side, we also must do to the other. On the left hand side, these two values cancel, and we're left with our 5x subtract 9. On the right hand side, 8 multiplied by 2, which is 16. After that, we've got to perform the inverse operation of the subtraction, which we know to be addition. So if we plus 9 to this side, these two values will cancel out, and we're just left with our 5x. On the right hand side, we also have to add our 9 to keep our equation balanced. We know that 16 plus 9 is 25. After that, we've got to remove the 5. The inverse of multiplication is division, so if we divide by 5, these should cancel out, and we're left with our x value. On the right hand side, we must also divide by 5, and 25 divided by 5, we know to be 5. So therefore, our x value should equal 5. So on our check step, we need to take the x value that we found, and substitute it back into the original equation and see whether it balances. So we've got 5 times our x value of 5, subtract 9, divided by 2 should equal 8. 5 times 5 we know to be 25, subtract 9, divided by 2 should equal 8. 25 take 9 is 16, 16 divided by 2 should equal 8. 16 divided by 2 is 8, 8 does equal 8, so we've found the correct solution. Now, it's your turn. Here, I have four problems for you to practice these skills with. These problems vary in complexity, and I want you to show the working out that we've just practiced together to see if you can find the correct solutions. You should also perform the check step. That way, you can be sure that you've found the correct solution. Thank you for watching.